Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Auto. So this video is about these vehicles, the Saturn City Van, the electric utility vehicle. So this video is intended as a uh, sort of a quick start guide, a beginner's guide to these vehicles. So if you've purchased one of these from Go Green Autos, you can share this video with the drivers and it shows you all the basics, how to use and operate them because no one reads the user manuals. So first off the keys, you do have a remote central locking fob, top is locking, bottom is unlocking, very simple. However, if for some reason the 12 volt battery has gone flat, you can still unlock it with a key, but you need to do that on the passenger door and you can unlock it the old fashioned way. So starting the vehicle, you put the key in the ignition, you put your foot on the foot brake and then turn the ignition on and then you just wait until it says ready up there on the dash and once it's ready you are running and ready to drive. Being electric of course there's no noise or vibration because there's no engine starting up. Uh, you will however hear an electric pump and that's the brake um, servo pump pressurizing the brake system and you will hear that uh, quite frequently um, pretty much every time you use the brakes the pump will come on and um, pressurize the brake system up again uh, and it does make quite a bit of noise uh, and at first you think there might be something wrong it's only because there's no engine drowning out uh, all the noises so you will hear the brakes grind and you will hear that brake pressure pump come on but of course it's all normal so to drive you simply select the gear you want keeping your foot on the foot brake and you either select drive or reverse and then it's just a simple case of driving it like an automatic so take the handbrake off take your foot off the foot brake and then onto the accelerator and these are um, set up quite nicely because they're designed to use in confined spaces so when you put your foot on the accelerator it's not going to shoot away like many electric vehicles do it's going to build up the speed quite gradually so it's a very safe and easy vehicle to use in confined spaces or a typical example of these is up on pavements or close to buildings or even inside buildings or around uh, in confined areas in schools and hotels and that sort of stuff. Um, and they're designed exactly for that sort of use. So they're very easy to drive, very safe, and the speed builds up very gradually. Obviously, when you're out on the open road, these will go up to 53 miles an hour. But uh, when you're on site and you want to drive slowly, then very easy to control and keep safe. So when you want to stop the vehicle, you use the foot brakes to stop the vehicle. You keep your foot on the foot brake when you stopped and then you select neutral. So every time you're changing the gear selector, you must have the vehicle stationary with your foot on the foot brake. If you want to go into reverse, you simply select reverse there and then you'll get the view from the rear view camera up there on the screen and you'll see you get green yellow and red areas when you're up where if there's an obstacle or wall behind you when it's up into the red area you're obviously very close and you get these two little ticks either side here that's when you're up very close to the vehicle when obviously you've got to stop and of course apply the handbrake every time you've stopped and leaving the vehicle. I don't need to go into all the controls because the lights and uh, wiper controls are exactly the same as every other type of vehicle. Um, heating on this is quite basic this one doesn't have the optional air conditioning when you have the air conditioning you'll have an electronic panel here uh, but heating is quite simply a fan and heat on or off as simple as that this is your um, hazard warning light switch and there's a 12 volt accessory socket there i think the maximum um, draw on that is 10 amp uh, but all the information is in the uh, user manual for that again i'm not going to go into all the detail of the stereo it's all pretty self-explanatory and it's a touch screen and all very easy to use i'll quickly explain the basics on the dash here obviously ready up there is uh, to show you that the vehicle is running and you're ready to drive uh, the other light to watch out for is the red door light up here that shows you when a door is ajar and not shut properly in this case we can see the driver's door is slightly open and it will show you when your passenger door is slightly open because it is quite easy on these not to um, shut the door properly uh, you need to give them a little bit of a slam uh, here's obviously your speed, your gear, and this is your battery state of charge. 
So on these, ideally, you want to charge the battery um, before it gets below 20%. That's if you want to look after the battery. If you're charging it um, every day and using the full range, then that's fine. Uh, but if you want to uh, maximize the life of the battery, when it gets down into the red level at 20%, that's when you want to put the vehicle on charge. And we can see there it says 56% and that is our current battery state. A pedestrian warning system, a sound that emits out the front of the vehicle when you're driving at slow speeds. And that just warns pedestrians that uh, an electric vehicle is coming because obviously they make no noise. And on these, it's sort of like a bird chirping sound. And you'll get that chirp as soon as you pick up a little bit of speed and um, it stops when you're you're doing a, a sort of decent road speed I think about 15 miles an hour or something like that but all the time you're driving that lower speed you will get that chirp chirp noise every few seconds it's quite loud because the speaker is actually down inside the dash um, so it sounds just as loud inside as it does outside so when driving these vehicles they do have uh, regen braking so when you lift off the accelerator it will slow the vehicle down but it is quite light but that's putting charge back in the battery um, there you'll notice the chirping of the pedestrian warning system so that's obviously on at low speeds but as i said when you lift off the accelerator the vehicle will slow down and virtually come to a stop and that's putting charge back in the battery so you want to utilize that by lifting off the accelerator much sooner reading the road ahead and just allow the vehicle to slow down because obviously that's putting some charge back in the battery and you're not wearing out your brake pads the next i'll quickly talk about the uh, windows you'll see little notches there in the runner and these are the positions that the windows will lock and you just push this button up to slide the window so you can lock it at the full open position or a venting position there or fully closed there and the mirrors are obviously manually adjustable the nice thing is is the vehicle is small enough that you can open the window and adjust it from this side you might have to take your seat belt off but it's all easily done from inside the vehicle i just mentioned the doors on these because it's quite easy to be a bit too gentle with the doors and not shut them properly and we can see there that's not slammed properly because we've still got a bit of play there on the door so you don't want to slam them from back here but just get them up close and give them a good thud and they will then shut properly and of course those red lights will then disappear off the dashboard as well the seats are adjustable on these you have a lever here to adjust the backrest and then you have a bar there for sliding the seats forward and backwards and there's quite a lot of adjustment on these seats the payload of these is a maximum of 500 kilograms in the back regardless of the model you have there's also a stated uh, maximum weight in the front for the passenger and the driver of 130 kilograms however i've spoken to the manufacturer about this to see whether that's a maximum weight on the front axle but they couldn't confirm that and it seemed it was more about just maintaining the maximum range of the vehicle when it comes to charging the vehicle the charge port is down here on the driver's side in the side panel here under this flap and it's a standard type 2 charging socket so whether you're using the type 2 to 16 amp commando cable that comes with the vehicle a portable charger often called a granny cable or a standard ev wall charger it's all the same you get your type 2 charging cable and you simply plug it in down here there is a flap on the port in there but just plug it in like that and then basically just leave it the vehicle has switched the charging system on and we can see there on the wall charger it is now charging so you just leave it to do its thing typically overnight a charge is going to take six to eight hours or so but the vehicle controls the charger so it will charge to 100 percent and then the vehicle will turn off your charger and turn off the mains and then it will be ready for the morning the windscreen washer bottle is behind the front cover here so to get to that you push down on the plastic cover to release these tags along the top and then you can lift that up it will come completely out but anyway here's your windscreen washer fluid and uh, here's also your brake fluid reservoir and then to put the panel back in you clip it into the bottom first and then just 
bend that down and the tags go back up under there under the windscreen and now that's back on. The reversing camera on these is here above the number plate and it's a good idea when you're around the back of the vehicle just to run your finger across the lens and that just removes any dirt from the lens there so you get a clear view on the screen in the dash. So I think I've covered all the basics and uh, of course everything else is in the user manual and do please share this quick video with all the drivers.